Good evening, ladies and gents. Welcome to the Cart Fix Live. Um, just a little heads up before we start. You, if you're watching through our app, unfortunately the comment comment section is not working through the app. So if you want if you want to interact with us, you want to ask questions, you want us to answer your questions, you need need to view through your browser. So come out of the app, re-log in through the normal website, um, and then we'll be able to interact with you. Otherwise, you can just watch through the app. Um, to start this live, we're going to show you an exclusive sneak peek. Um, to the trailer for Yately Car Park Part 2. Oh, Golden Balls is back. 2004, I'd done my first season on Yately. I'd caught four of the nine famous mirrors in LA. It was almost life and death, you know, I wanted them so, so badly. You know, I'm talking big, crusty, brown and grey backs, you know, like the heathers, the, the dustbins, the, the single scales, they're, they're all chunky, they're all out there. I was still after Heather, I was still after single scale, and I was still after Baby Ori. I had a bite. Beep, beep. The fish just exploded on the top. There was a massive vortex, and you just see it just go. Whoosh. I've seen a flash of grey. It's a Heather. Heather fucking leather. Badoo, badoo. Ladies and gentlemen, um, to start with, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the, the free bits that we're going to give away. So we're going to give away 10 cups, 10 sticker packs to people that ask good questions. Um, so before, before we get to the questions, you can put your questions in now, but um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, um, the session to Priory and Churchgate first. So get your questions in now while I have a little chat about the Priory and Churchgate session. So Priory is, you know, it's your typical park lake. You know, there's lakes like that all over the country. Admittedly, Priory is a bit of a hidden gem. You know, there's some, some really nice fish in there. And what I love most about it for cold water fishing is that I can see the fish at all times. You know, the water's really clear, the water's really shallow, um, and it's very easy to judge how how things are working you know if, if the fish are all over you and nothing's happening on your rods then you know you need to change something or something's not quite right um you know a lot of the time in carp fishing especially winter carp fishing you're fishing blind you know you don't know where they are exactly you're you know you're chucking and chancing a lot of the time at priory you could see these fish um and it was very easy to make adjustments and it kept it interesting you know throughout the session um probably should have caught more we put a gopro on the boat at the very end of the session to show where i was dropping my pva bag and i thought i was dropping it right under the bushes and when i watched the footage back of the um of the, the solid bag coming out of the bait boat i was i was being too conservative with it really I was, I was dropping it just under the trees i needed to be taking it right under there. there's no snags under there but um on the gopro footage you could see the bottom was all eaten away all really really clear and um, yeah, in hindsight, I probably could have caught some more fish from that spot. And also, I didn't start fishing across to where they um, where they feed the ducks until the last night. You know, I'd I've been fishing two rods out to the island, obviously not doing them as well as I could. And then I ended up catching three fish out of um, the area where they feed the birds. And you know, that's fishing. You know, when you don't fish somewhere regularly, you do the best that you can, and you're constantly making adjustments based on what you see and what's happening. Um, but yeah, every time when I finish a session, no matter what I caught. I always look back and think I could have done better, and the truth is, you probably could. You know, you know, it's a lot of the time. That's how you, when you fish somewhere regularly, you get real super tuned to it and and do everything more efficiently. So yeah, that was um, sort of how Priory went. It was an enjoyable session, caught some nice fish, um, and then we went to Churchgate, which Churchgate is your more sort of upmarket commercial venue. You know, they really put some um, some money into it, really um, done the swims up. And yeah, it was a, a nice lake, and we got really lucky to catch one of those um, one of those real scaly stockies that have only just been introduced, a twenty nine pounder. Um, to catch fish like that in December was a lovely, lovely, um, lovely, lovely result. Tactics wise, the solid bags were sort of key in, on both lakes. On Priory, you couldn't get away with maggots and that's a lot of roach and a lot of eels in there. But um, on Churchgate, not so. 
Um, and the maggots definitely maggots in the bait boat, casters in the bait boat. Once I started putting a few of them in in the boat with the bag, the bites I, I started catching more towards the end of the session. And that was as I started to get a feel for it, started to do things a little bit more accurately, a bit better. Um, and it all worked out well. So the the technical side of those two films we showed in Peckers Techers. We obviously showed you the the, um, the real simple to tie multi-rig using braid and then how to construct a nice solid bag um, and obviously the key to a really nice solid bag is that it doesn't have much air in it if you've got a bag that's got loads of air in it what often quite often happens is the air bubble comes to the top and it all rips the bag open as it melts and it all sort of the whole pile of um, feed ends up all over the bottom spread out not saying it won't catch like that because of course you will but I like it when the bag just sort of splits open and it opens up like um just like a little trap, you know, that little wafter just stands up in, on the top of the bait. And I'm sure they come in most of the time, that first mouthful, the hook bait flies up into the mouth and they end up in, in a hard world of trouble with three and a half ounce lead stuck to their face. Um, so yeah, they're the, the two films that we've done this month. Um, have we had any questions how, yet, Scott? How, how would you, just a question from me, so obviously going into spring, how would you approach um, those lakes now going into spring if they were going to go and fish them? Um, right, so if you're going to go to Priory Park, you know, the most important thing, no matter where you go, is getting on the fish. Um, and those fish get around that little lake all the time. So I would make sure that you're watching constantly, looking looking to see where they're getting, what part of the island they're sitting at. You know, that's you need your bait right underneath them. You know, it's no good waiting for them to come, really, on Priory. You need to see where they are and be fishing where they are. A lot of people... And I probably mean 95% of people these days are fishing with spinner rigs, um, with pop-ups. And on a little lake like that, it's under that immense pressure. I think, especially when you know it's like really clear by those islands, I think a little wafter, you know, if you're fishing on gravel like that, you can in really shallow water, a little wafter could be an edge, like a small one, like a 12 mil yellow or 12 mil pink or something. Um, and again, I think the solid bags are very edgy there. I think that's um, a great tactic. So I would... I'd probably fish more or less the same, to be honest with you, Scott. Um, Churchgate, if I was going there, I'd probably want to fish along the middle of the island. I imagine like where we were on the end of the island was good and down the reeds, but I think fishing to the middle of the island with the sun, like the sun on there in the spring, cruising along there, I think, and spotting. You know, you, obviously I was using the bait boat, um, when, but if I was fishing out to that island, I'd probably just spot along the island margin with corn, 10 mil boilies that sort of thing and fish really sort of low small pop-ups you know that's probably what i would do if i was going back there sweet yeah hope that helps some people yeah. uh we have got a lot of questions so if you ask a question through uh through the, the live chat um next to the video or below the video if you're on a phone uh as daryl said earlier if you have missed we're going to give away some lovely cart fix mugs which daryl will um, demonstrate on the uh, on the screen there on the left, <laughs> and and some stickers which we have just had delivered today. Yeah, fresh. <laughs> there you go. That's it. Oh look at that. Right. The first question, which you should be able to answer very easily, um, is because it's a lake that you've fished before. Uh, it's from Peter James. Uh, he's asked, "Evening, chaps. My question for Daryl. Scenario scenario is, uh, you've just got a ticket for Rockford." You're Ooh. not the best at casting. Ooh. Twenty wraps tops. Uh, the banks are very busy. What would you? What would your approach be now? Um, obviously, Rockford has been like when I fished Rockford. It wasn't under the level of pressure that it is now. It had more fish in it back then. It had more bream. It's definitely a much more difficult prospect. But on the the flip side of that. The long range, fish, long range fishing, which I did, has also been done to death on there. Um, and although I only fished there a little bit in the spring, I do remember that they did come in quite a bit more regularly than they had in the autumn. So if you are, if you're not a great caster and you are going to fish Rockford, I would suggest you do so in the in the earlier part of the year. So the spring and the summer. Once it gets to autumn, they do tend to push out into the middle quite a lot. Um, from my past experience so yeah there's there there is opportunities to catch them short especially in um 
I know they get in that big bay at times. You know, that it's obviously there's times when they're sat in the middle, and there's times when they get into that big bay um, to get some get some weed in there quite early on. I think so. And I also remember him spending a little bit. Of t- the, the swims are slightly different now, but the the opposite bank to Spinnaker, there's a lot of shallow ground out there, and they they quite often drifted along there in the spring, close in um, and into that big bay. So yeah, if you can't cast miles, I would ignore the central swims. I would concentrate looking around the bays um, and just fish for opportunities. You know, if they're all jumping in the middle and go home, <laughs> you know, that's probably, you know, because they will be sort of semi-grouped up, I imagine. And there's not a lot of fish left. There's still a, he- a, re- a lot of big ones in there, but I think there was 120 fish in Rockford when I fished there. Um, and I think the otters had a few, a few have died, you know, um, and it is a very, very difficult lake. But this is what I hear these days. It's not easy. You know, a lot of people doing a lot of time and catching next to nothing. So I would I would use my time wisely. Um, if, if ever there's a time when fish are going to come in the edge, then it's generally in May. You know, like May is a very important month in the carp anglers calendar. Um, and if you can do a bit of time early May, then if you can't catch them, then you're not going to catch them at any time. You know that's the that's what I would I'd recommend that you got down there, do as much time in that month as you can, because that will probably be your best shout at catching some carp close in. Sweet, sweet. Uh, okay, we've got another one. Okay. So Michael, uh, hi Daryl, why do you always use the hybrid lead clip over a standard lead clip? What is the benefit? Well, the whole um, design or the idea behind a hybrid leg clip is that the swivel cannot come out of it. And that means it forces the, um, the ejection of the lead. So if you're using a leg clip for the purpose of it dropping the lead, then I would use a hybrid leg clip. And I, that's, and I do, you know, I'm, uh, some of the guys at Corda, Dan, Tom, and that they fish what they call the running leg clip. So that it's, they don't use a hybrid leg clip. They use a standard one. They use the weight of the lead to hook the fish. And then when the fish shakes its head, the um, the leg clip comes away from the swivel. The leg clip slides down the line, um, so it gives the fish less chance to throw the um, to throw the hook, you know, on the on the on the take. But yeah, I, know I always use the hybrid leg clip. I find that I've, ever since I first tried them, I've never gone back. You know, I really like them. I like the design. They're pretty good for anti tangle. If you don't, if you, I tend never to use. Um, the quick change systems, you know, if you're going to use, if you use quick change systems with a PDA bag, obviously you don't get tangles, but quick change systems with standard rigs can be more prone to tangle when you use that quick change system. So I tie it directly to the ring swivel um, and I find them, yeah, really, really good. When you're um, zig fishing, Daryl, do you usually use the hybrid ones? Because like from, from my understanding of it, if you use the hybrid low clip for when you're zig fishing, the, the, it, the, the the lead clip can't come running, can it? But if you're using an, a standard lead clip, if you're zig fishing and it's not, if it doesn't clip into the swivel properly, then it's gonna shoot up the yeah the line. I always find when I use lead clips on zigs, which I do a lot of the time, most it's very rare that the lead comes off of the clip because when you, when you fish a normal rig like so, the fish gets the hook in its mouth. And it's that violent head shaking that dislodges the the lead from the clip. You know, when you're using a big long hook link like that, um, the, the, the fish just can't get enough whip on it to, to get the lead off. And unless the lead comes into contact with something, it generally stays on. Um, I know some people, rather than use a tail rubber, just use a bit of PVA string on the back of the clip. But... Um, I don't. I honestly don't actually mind the lead staying on. You know, I don't want to lose leads willy nilly. Um, and like I say, if the fish goes through through some weed or something, then the lead will come off the clip. But generally on zigs, if you haven't had any sort of gone through any weed or anything, the lead stays on the clip, and I'm quite happy to keep the lead. You know, there's no no, no reason really to lose it unless it really has to come off. Cool. Uh... We've got a lot of questions. Yeah, they want some prize. We better give a prize away for the next well, we, one, then, well, we? Well, well, we have it's, got it's totally up to you when you give them away. Well, I'd forgotten, you... so sorry, you first guys. <laughs> well, you, tell you, me, ask me the question. When, when we get a, you know, a, a, a question that you like, then it's up to you. Um, I'll just keep a note of it. 
<laughs> just looked up and you're showing the stickers off. Um, so Carl Hunt has asked, when would you use a naked chod instead of a standard chod? Um, I, I've used naked chods more than sort of the lead core equivalent. And generally I fish naked chods over cleaner bottom. And by that I mean, you know, I fish naked chods on clean gravel spots, on clean spots, on low lying weed. Um, and I think they work, in my opinion, they work best when the top bead is less than 18 inches from the lead. So I've, I have caught them further than that and I've caught them less. But generally my top bead on a naked chod is about 12 to 14 inches from the lead. I've used them like that the most, and that's when I've, because I've caught on it, I haven't felt the need to change. But I don't like the idea of a naked chod with a bead right up the line, because I think it gives the fish too much opportunity to spit the rig out. Um, so if you're going to cast into, when you're fishing for no drops, you know, fishing chods without drops into thicker weed um, on top of like old weed beds, um, mossy sort of weed, and you're fishing with that high bead up the line, I think it's better on lead core. So you, you would have seen me in some of the quarter films when we fished um, on the public lake in France. We were, were casting out, sort of get, barely getting a drop. We're fishing sort of three foot lead core leaders with the uh, B two foot up the line, getting muffled sort of drops, real subtle ones. Um, and I think on a choddy like that, the fish actually gets hooked on the tension of the lead core because the lead core sort of sinks down into the bottom debris or weed or whatever it is. And just that when the fish, the second the fish puts its mouth around that pop-up, the hooks are so sharp that just lifting the lead core off the bottom is enough to hook them. So if you're going to fish with a higher top bead over more debris, then I will tend to use it with lead core. And you're fishing over cleaner bottom, um, then I tend to fish it naked with the bead closer to the lead. Should we give it that's good. That's a prize. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's okay. um, Yeah. That's a prize. Okay. So that is Carl Hun. So I love giving stuff away. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> uh, Carl Hun. I'm, I'm making a note of your name. Now we haven't uh, just uh, for tonight. We're not going to do this in the future. Um, we're uh, we've given uh, access to non-members, um, and that and the main reason behind it was so that they could uh, watch the draw for the two tackle boxes that we're giving away, um, which are there. Um, so, Carl, if and, and any future winners for tonight, if you're not a member, can you please email me at scott at carpfix.tv or just use the contact um, uh, little tab on the, uh, on the website and get in touch, and we will arrange your mug and stickers, which are also available to buy at carpfix.shop. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Del Boy. Right. Um, before, before we go on to the next question, should we tell them about our new spinner, spinner rig pack deal? Yeah, so just hold that up in front of the GoPro. Should I just clear this up uh, a little bit? Yeah. That's it. But yeah, just hold it a little bit to your right a little bit more so I can see the... The swivel end, that's it. You, 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 you're in there. You're in Am there. I in? Yeah, that's it. You're good. Right, so we are. We do a yearly subscription plan. Sub, subscription plan, fifty nine ninety nine. Um, so that's basically you're paying for ten months and you're getting twelve months. And to make that a little bit more interesting for some of you guys that are not subscribers or some of you are monthly guys that would like to sign up to twelve months. We've decided to do a spinner pack bundle where you get all of these products, all of the stuff that you need to construct a spinner rig. So there's, I think there's 55 pounds worth at retail of, um, yeah, all the bits and pieces you need to tie a spinner rig, all core the products, all nice stuff, and a nice pot of high leakage pineapple pop ups. And some stickers. And some stickers. <laughs> Scott's got his new sticker bundle pack yeah, that he's keen to Bring them in, in the middle a bit more so we can get a good... Like yeah, this, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And, and the, all of this, plus 12 month subscription for 94.99, and you'll be saving yourself over £30 at retail price. So stop. let's stop with the old market trade a bit and um, <laughs> let's go back to the old questions. Right, okay. This is a little bit of a deep... Well, it could be a deep question. I'm not too sure. Um, so... Uh, David Oliver has asked, I want to know what keeps Daryl going through the, through the years. D 
deep down, why do you carp fish? I guess I'm just not wired up properly. Um, <laughs> you know, for, everyone goes fishing for different reasons. Some people go like get away from the family when it, or get away from work. Some people it's just like a little bit of a hobby. You know, for, it doesn't matter what it is. For, for, fishing can be whatever it is for, for whoever it is. But for me, it's been a way of life since since I was 15, 16, 17, 18. You know, since the age of 18 and being driving. You know, I've fished over 100 nights a year, every year since that. Um, and that's where I feel like I am me. Um, you know, I really can, once I get my teeth into going to somewhere regularly, you know, it sort of, it takes over and I really, really get, I find myself in a, in a place where I'm, I'm really happy. It's what I love to do the most. Um, and it's, it's not, I don't have to push myself to do it. I have to push myself to do other stuff. You know, it's like at the moment I'm writing a book just finding the time and the dedication you know without lockdown I don't know how the book would never get done you know it's because I'm always every year I say oh I'm not going to go fishing this winter I'm, I'm going to have the winter off and I'm going to do something productive I look at the weather it's 12 degrees one December day I do a couple of trips and before I know it there's no writing you know fishing it's just it is my life um and you know, like I say I don't need to push myself I need to I need to try and put, pull myself away from it at times Cool. Okay. Uh, I was just checking because uh, my uh, wife, Chloe, has just messaged me saying, I seem to be having problems with connection, but I've just scrolled through the messages to see if there's any other issues. doesn't appear there is. So, Chloe, it's probably you. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Uh, let me just find another question. Um, hopefully a, a quick one for you. Um, Mick the Greek. Oh, hey. not, do you know Mick the Greek? I know Mick the Greek. Okay, so he's asked, when fishing weedy waters, do you prefer a small lead to find uh, your spots or a heavy lead? Um, it depends, you know. If to sorry to find the spots. Uh, yeah. Uh, when fishing weedy waters, do you prefer a small lead to find the spots, um, or a heavy lead? It depends on the situation, you know. If it, if it's close in, you know, then I. I quite often use a light one just to to be uh, discreet. But if you're fishing at like longish range, let's say like more than 80 yards and there's a bit of a wind on, I think it's best to use a big lead because when you, when you hit the clip well, you can consistently stretch out the line to the same sort of amount each time as in get the bow out of it as you hit the clip so everything becomes more consistent. So, you know, there's an argument for both in, in different situations, but... You know, when I'm plumbing at long range for small clear spots on braid, I tend to use big leads. Um, and when I'm fishing close, I, you don't really need to worry about that bow and that because it's it's not really a factor at, at short range. So, yeah, I tend to use smaller ones. And because Mick, the Greek, asked questions last time, <laughs> he can have a cup, a Mick cup the Greek. And, 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 and a sticker pack. Mick the Greek. I don't know what your name will be on our... Um, if you are a subscriber, which I... Would assume that you are. If you know Daryl, you probably are a he, subscriber. He was on the on the questions last was time. He? Yeah, so he, he must be. Yeah, so yeah. I might not be able to find you with that name because um, there might be quite a few mix. So I don't because I don't have your your surname. Email Scott at cartfix TV and uh, yeah, we'll sort it we'll out. Sort you can out, you, mate. Daryl, whilst we're we're just having a little bit in between, can you just double check your phone's not on Wi Fi? Um, Am I cutting you off? No, no, no. I just want to just eliminate that issue. No, no I'm not on it. Yeah, no, that's no. fine. That's fine. Um, right, okay. He's precious uh, about his Wi-Fi, isn't he? No, it's just because it interrupts it, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> which rig would you use for a straight bottom bait so that the bait always pushes away from the lead and never tangles? Most I have tried all land awkwardly when tested in the edge. But I guess in the edge, you're not getting that actual... Are you getting the actual result to, as, you, as you would when you're um, testing or not? I, when I fish bottom baits and done well, I've tended to fish them the exact opposite of that. So rather than the rig that pushes them away, um, a rig that can just land in a pile and be good. So when I fish bottom baits, I tend to fish 20 millers, 18, 20 millers, and I tend to fish them onto braid, knotless knot fashion that... Um, any of you that's been following my fishing for a long time will see that it's a rig that I used a lot years ago um, and caught a lot of fish on. You know, I think I think braid bottom baits. It's not, people are always scared about tangles with braid, but if you're using a big bait and you've 
got a good anti-tangle system on, whether it be an inline or um, a leg clip. I find tubing, anti-tangle tubing, more anti-tangle than leg core. Um, I've used inlines with uh, leg core and braid and not had tangles with big baits, but leg core and leg clips are not so well. You know, I've had the odd tangle like that, sort of, because the tail rubber's designed to fit tubing in and the leg core's a bit loose, looser fitting in the end of the tail rubber. You know, sometimes that braid can catch on the back of the tail rubber. So, yeah, in answer to your question, I wouldn't, I don't use a rig that resets for bottom baits. I actually fish it with braid, so it all lands sort of soft and it, it yeah, it's always worked really well for me. Not it's not straight braid, six, seven, seven inches long. Um, caught loads and loads and loads of fish from really hard lakes like that, um, and it couldn't be any more simple. Cool, uh, David Oliver. I, I think he might have already asked one already. I'm not too sure. Um, a simple question: What are Daryl's thoughts on long shank hooks? No, I've not used them a lot. You know, in fact, I've hardly used anything but wire gapes. If you again, like if you followed my fishing, you say I'm not the sort of guy that chops and changes all the times. Um, so it, for most of my carp fishing career in my whole life, I used I used to use stiff riggers with eyes bent forward when I was in my teens. In my twenties, I've sort of used wire gapes, most wire gapes and choddy hooks, which are fairly short to mid shank hook. Um, my only experience with longer shank hooks really is so out of date. You know, the last time I fished with longer shank hooks, I was fishing knotless, not mono straight through um, and dropping a lot of fish. And knowing what I know now, that was probably because the, the hook didn't have the ability to drop. You know, it's catching anywhere in the mouth because it was on stiff on a stiffer mono. Um, I lost a lot of fish and I lost confidence in that sort of pattern of hook. Um, what I do know about long shank hooks is they're very fast reacting on a palm test, so they, they tend to catch quickly. Um, but speaking to people, like obviously I've speak to loads of people um, in fishing, and you, although they catch quickly, I wouldn't say they're um, what I call a great hook to land pattern. You know, you do, from what I've seen, what I know, longer shank patterns, you do tend to drop the odd fish more occasionally with them so that's why i don't use them you know i fish waters with big carp um I, the the thought of losing one on some of the lakes i fish is more than beth bears thinking about so you yeah, know i tend to, you know I, I don't want to say that they're then they're, they're no good because i haven't used them enough but um the reason i don't use them is because yeah i'm just a bit nervous about hook pulls with longer shank hooks nice, nice. um Hi, this is from Kieran. Uh, hi, Daryl. What's the ideal spring baiting approach if no fish are showing and would you use mesh sticks over a baited area? As in, would I fish mesh bags over the bait or would yeah. I fish mesh bags instead that, of a baited area? No, he's saying mesh sticks over a baited area. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's how I'm reading it anyway. Yeah, I, I think mesh bags are a great, like mesh bags, PVA bags, you know, um, especially at the moment with everyone fishing pop-ups all of the time, you know, they are a great alternative. Like, I love using PVA, mesh, stuff like that in waters where there's not nuisance fish. You know, if you've got lakes that are full of bream and tench, for some reason, you know, the attractiveness of a PVA stick um, can just be too much. You know, the, the, the bream and the tench just annihilate those sort of tactics. But when you haven't got the concern of them, you know, then having that added attraction around your rig, especially in murky water, is a massive, massive advantage. So, um, yeah, if there's no nuisance fish in a lake, you're fishing with a bait, uh, um, you're fishing over a baited patch and you're putting sticks over the top. The only thing the only thing with using PVS sticks, if you're fishing long range, um, it's more difficult to cast accurately with PVA sticks on. Obviously, they catch in the wind a little bit more and stuff. Um, but if you're not fishing far out, um, and it isn't particularly, you know, you haven't got to be plumb, every car hasn't got to be plumb on the money, then just sometimes that having that attraction around the rig is actually more important than it being on a certain part of a spot. So, um, you know, it, I can't give you an answer to that. It's got, I don't know the lake, I don't know the situation, but um, PVA sticks are certainly very attractive and on the right venue at the right time, they definitely work. Have a guess what the next question's about. When is Yately Part 2 out? No. Clo like it is a when is something coming out? Oh, but you sort of said it there. You're going to talk about clothing, yes. aren't you? 
<laughs> yeah, no, it's, it is happening, but um, it just takes a little bit of time. We've we, we've had a couple of designs look um, for hats, t-shirts, um, hoodies. You know, we are looking into shoes, trousers, yeah. jackets. <laughs> yeah, we're just taking over CNA. Like, so CNA went under because we we bought them out. Um, no, we we are looking into it. It's taking it. You know, like anything, you know, it takes a little bit of time. Um, we are we are going to do it. Um, we've got a sticker pack. <laughs> Look, the long and short of it is we've it, it, because of because of the virus and because of the, the UK leaving the EU, we've had lots of issues with potentially um, uh, uh, a longer uh, delayed time of getting products into the country. So we've sourced both somewhere in the UK and it's somewhere. Um, outside of the eu but would still uh, prove difficult to get them into the country at this time so we will have stuff hopefully very soon and uh, we'll also have stuff for the future at some point as well so we'll yeah we yeah we'll have stuff soon won't we Dal? i hope so mate i, I can't wait to see Pe- it. people are people are asking for it so yeah there's we'll definitely a demand for it and the thirst for it so we will do it yeah. it's just as fast yeah. as we can, you know. It's all it's all new to us. It, it feels like bizarre. We've only been running three we've months. Got stickers um, and the mugs. We've got <laughs> mugs and stickers and studio, and you know, it's it's, yeah. all, it's going well. Um, yeah. What should we should we actually should we? Let's do. Let's do, let's do, let's do, let's do he can have, he can have, he can have a cup. He all right, okay. For, okay. for his clothing, Sim, Simon. Otherwise, we're never going to get through them all. Simon O. Um, I believe you are a member. Your name looks very familiar. So if oh, you can email that. me. Or I'll try and find you. Um, so that's three. I've given three away. Seven to go. Uh, yeah. We've got Melissa Fairclough. And I think Melissa is a an annual member. I think she was one of the first annual members. Hi, Melissa. So um, she has asked, Daryl, what's the most unusual bait you've used on the hair, not including all the usual baits, corn, boilies, meat? Have you used like a, a midget gem or anything? <laughs> Um, I've caught on cockles, which are like these little shellfish things. Um, used to get them from the the market. There used to be a market in Chelmsford uh, High Street. Um, Still is. Yeah, and just they used to cut little, little ice trays, scoop scoop them up in a little plastic bag. You used to put three of them on a the hair. Um, you wouldn't want to cast them very far. We used to look under an arm, under arm amount near the lily pads at Central Park over hemp and catch lots of fish on them. Um, I've also caught a few fish, a few, but it's, you know, it's not nothing rocket science. It's on pepperami. Pepperami used to be on lakes. Back in the day, boilies were banned on some lakes and stuff. And yeah, pepperami used to be a good alternative. But the strangest thing that I ever see anyone catch on, I was fishing at um, a lake near Stansted, a little estate lake. On the, There's two lakes there. It's on the little top lake. And uh, it's probably about the size of a tennis court, this lake. And there was a kid with his dad, and they were sort of, you know, casting about all day. And all of a sudden, I heard the kid go, "Dad, Dad, I've got one! It was on the Twix." Um, <laughs> Twix. And he, he, he caught on a, he caught, I think, a seventeen pounder on a piece of Twix. But actually, no, another one that just springs to mind. After Christmas one year, I was down at Central Park again, the lake that I caught on the cockles, which is again in near near Chel- Chelmsford Town Centre. Um, someone caught on a bit of turkey. I remember him wrapping his line around this lump of turkey and sticking the hook in and flick like it was how he caught anything I don't know he literally wrapped his line around the turkey and then stuck his hook in a big old piece of it flung it out and he caught a carp um, so yeah they're, they're the weirdest things that I've seen people catch on when I worked in France um, for two years um, a guy turned up um, the lake wasn't particularly difficult but a guy turned up and started to use um, like the little prawns Oh yeah, no, not like king prawns, but you know little prawns. Yeah. You can, you know, um, he put those on his hair. I can't remember what time of year it was, but he destroyed the lake. He caught lots of prawns. Loads, yeah, just little prawns on the hair. But they stink, don't they? When they're especially yeah. when they're slightly on the turn, they absolutely yeah. kick. And then I tried them, couldn't get a bite. It was weird. Yeah, very strange. Must um, have been your rigs, mate. Po- yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, David Yarum. Hey, David Yarum. Yarum. Yar- Yarum. Yeah, I have to apologise to David. Dave, I called him David Yarum, and it's Yarum, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, so I know Dave. 
Uh, David has asked, what time of year do you think particles are in their prime and when do you use them? Uh, when, and when would you personally switch to boilies, uh, a boilie only approach? Don't me to read that again. That's fine, I've got yeah. that. Um, well, different particles at different times. You know, like sweet corn, for example, is a great bait at all times of year. You know, like a lot of times when I find boilies slowing up, you know, or at, at early season, like March, April, I found sweet corn to be absolutely devastating. And also sort of October, November, I've also found sweet corn to be really, really good. Um, but I've caught on it in summer as well. So sweet corn's a very, um, it's a good cold water particle, sweet corn. Layer pits example, um, we filmed there for our next film that's coming out. Um, and those fish are addicted to hemp. You know, a lot of hemp goes into that lake. Um, and when we filmed there recently, February, spawning straight hemp, um, the most, it, hemp can be batchy, um, and it's not to do with preparation, it can be to do with the batch of hemp that you get, um, and I said to Scott when I picked up this batch of hemp, it was, yeah, it was, it was filthy oil in it, and it was, it was a really, real stinky good batch, and that was good, um, tigers, you know, tigers are a great bait in the, they do sort of, they work all year round again, tigers. I've caught on them in the winter, I've caught them in the summer, but um, they're really good in the summer, tigers, you know, peanuts. Um, so, yeah, there's no exact answer. Um, but when do I change to boilies? Um, you know, boilies suit the opportunist style of fishing. So, if you're, if you're fishing low stock lakes where you're looking for the fish and then getting out onto the minimally, you know, you're casting out pop-up rigs, just fishing for drops and, and spreading boilies, you know, they really do suit that style rather than the spawning style. Um, but once, you're, once you've found a spot um, and you are going to spawn to it, then I don't think it ever hurts to have a few nuts mixed in with your boilies. I tend to fish straight boilies when I'm fishing more opportunist, opportunistically um, because if you, spawning tigers on the top of fish is obviously not a great, great idea. Um, let's give Dave... A sticker pack and a cut. Yeah, Dave Yarum. Yeah. Dave Yarum. I remember Dave. him from long old time. So I, if you can, go on, mate. Sorry. I know Dave from uh, Charity Lakes in Norfolk. Charity Lakes. In I, Norfolk. I met him on um, done a charity event for Spug um, on Catch Twenty Two next door. Um, charity event for Spug. Yeah. On Catch Twenty Two. Yeah, and <laughs> and then they told me about this lake that had a big old simo in it. Um, 49, 49 pounder um, that was well, relatively under the radar as in like not many of the big deals had gone and caught it and it was just um, it was quite a friendly one it was up, rather than driving west across um, the M25 to the lakes Reading way that sort of way it was up towards Norfolk for me which was away from the traffic and you know, it was like going back in time fishing over mm -hmm. there Right, we're at, we're at an almost half po halfway point of view in terms of giving some prizes away. We've got a lot more people join us, yeah. So they might not have seen the trailer at the start. Do we give them another little sneak? Go peek? On, it's only fifty seconds or something. Okay. Creatively made by Winston, who uh, he edited it uh, this week, um, and he has done a marvelous job. If you don't know who Winston is, he used to do a bit for Nash. Um, and he still works in the trade with a number of companies. And uh, he has helped us out a little bit. Done a bit of magic. Done a little bit of magic. So here is the trailer from Yately Part 2. Do you want to explain a little bit about Yately Part 2 before they watch it? <laughs> but be ready for the sound effects. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's cut all of my sound effects from the story and put them into a trailer. Yeah. I'm like that um, the guy from Police Academy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Yately um, Part 2 has, comes obviously after the Part 1 film. Um, the second part, I went a lot more more confident. You know, the first year, I didn't believe it was possible. Um, and I came back the second year with confidence and a little bit more assertive with trying to get into the swims. Um, and it, I caught, I think, three or three, four, three, I had four fish, but one of them was a repeat capture the second season. Big orange. Uh, the big, I had the big orange twice. I had pearly tail. Mm. And uh, the story ends with heavy the leather. And for those of you that, maybe aren't as old as me. <laughs> um, you know, Heather the Lever is what you would call like a tier one carp. You know, the Black Mirrors, the the Marys, you know, one of the most famous carp to ever swim. 
caught by Richie McDonnell, Terry Hearn, you know, some of the, the epic. big... Uh, epic. Yeah, Heather, 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 the effing leather, is uh, a big deal carp. And to, to have caught that at 21 years old was a very, very special moment indeed. Here we go. Oh, Golden Balls is back. 2004, I'd done my first season on Yately. I'd caught four of the nine famous mirrors in that lake. It was almost life and death, you know, I wanted them so, so badly. You know, I'm talking big, crusty, brown and grey backs, you know, like the heathers, the, the dustbins, the, the single scales, they're, they're all chunky, they're all out there. Fish on! I was still after heather, I was still after single scale, and I was still after baby orange. I had a bite, beep, beep, the fish just exploded on the top. There's a massive vortex and you just see it just go, whoosh, I've seen a flash of grey. It's a heather. Heather fucking leather. Badoo, badoo. Whee! <laughs> We're back! So, we've got um, a little bit to tell you before we move on to the last few questions to give away. How many how many cups and sticker packs have we got left to give away? Uh, Five so or we've six? Done, we've done four, so we've got another, six, another, another six. Yeah, another six cups and sticker packs to give away. But just quickly, remember we have ten, is it? Uh, ten to give away. We've got six of the green ones, the one that you're holding up there. Yeah. And then we've got four of the camo ones. Yeah. And they've so, all got, I think they've all got the, the red vices inside. Yeah. With, well, with all your bits. Yeah, 10 complete Jag sharpening kits. This is exclusive for Carpfix members. This is not for um, everyone viewing tonight, but 10 of these. Um, and all you have to do to stand a chance of winning one of these 10 complete uh, Jag sharpening kits is have an active membership on the 31st of March. So whether you've got a rolling month plan, whether you've got six months, whether you've got a 12 month, as long as you've got an active membership on the last day of the month, you will automatically be in with a chance of winning yourself one of those 10 complete Jag sharpening kits. Um, more questions, please, Scotty. Okay, so Matthew Wheeler uh, has asked, in your combi rig uh, discussed on Pecker's Techers, if you like helicopter setup, is there any reason you couldn't use boom uh, dark and the dark matter combination instead of N-trap semi-stiff? Oh, you could... No, oh, you could use that with N-trap en semi-stiff. You know, the, all of the fish that I caught at Wellington Country Park, um, like when I had that epic little run of fish there through like June, July and August this year, um, they were all fish like that. Th I was using 30 pound N-trap semi-stiff with that combi, that loop in the end so you can quick change the hook. Um, and you can definitely fish that rig like so. So, cause I, because I did, um, and I actually, <laughs> I had a rake of fish from Wellington um, this summer, exactly on what you're describing. So you can, he can have a cup. Oh, you're gonna make me go back to where I yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who was who was that? Matthew Wheeler, wasn't it? Is that right? Uh, yeah, that was the Pecker's Techers one, wasn't it? Yeah, Pecker's Techers. Right, so let me just make a note of him. That's five, five to go, five cups yeah. and five. So Matthew, packs. yeah, I'll try and find you if I can't, and you don't get a, if you don't get an email by Monday. Uh, send me uh, a message scott at carpfix.tv um, I just had a good one about boat fishing yeah um, I just need to <laughs> what does the uncle think of your uh, impressions of him <laughs> I think <laughs> uncle got pretty upset to be fair um, bless him it's um, it was only a bit of light hearted banter calm down that's all I would say bless him right um, so Phil um, what's your top tips on dropping rigs from bait boats to ensure good presentation any do's or don'ts will we see a peckers techers on bait bits use bait boat bait, use. well he's put bait bits use bait, bait boats it use. means bait boats use yeah. to be honest i'm i'm not that experienced with a bait boat um i've not used them that much i've used them a lot well not a lot but more to bait up with than actually drop rigs um, and I was always under the impression that when dropping rigs from the boat, you want to be able to feel the lead down as well. Um, but in the brief amount of time that I've played around with them, that seems a bit silly trying to swing the lead out of the boat um, away from the bait. Um, and when I've dumped more sort of in a pile, as long as you've got a rig that, um, that kicks out from the lead and the impact, 
and I don't see much. If you know it's clear under the boat, then feeling it down, you know, if you know it's good there, then you better. I think you're better off just dropping it. You know, um, in the big carp buzz film, that's one of the big carp buzz films that's going to come out soon. And um, one of the quarter films I've done, I was fishing um, on Kingfisher Lake at Bluebell, fishing under a tree. Um, and it was a spot you could have used a baiting pole to, to tip on. But, you know, if you're miles away with a baiting pole, you'd be dropping blind. So what I was doing, I was driving the bait boat in there with the rig. And I was up the tree looking over the bait boat. And once the boat was over the spot that I wanted to drop on, it was like dropping the rig straight onto a dartboard. Um, so, yeah, I've... I know a lot of people do talk about feeling led down out of the boat, but um, yeah, I wouldn't want to be giving too much advice on that because I'm, I certainly wouldn't consider myself an expert at that. It's not something that I've done a lot of. I have felt led down out of a boat and I have caught, um, but I'm starting to think that just dropping it all in a pile with a rig that kicks out, it might be a better tactic, especially to keep the bait directly over the rig. Cool, nice. Uh, this is a, a, a little bit of a complex question because it's not something that I've really thought about. But Danny um, has asked, at what range would you say there is no need to fish a slacker line due to the mono taking on water? At some point, it won't be beneficial to try and conceal your line, will it? Um, I tend to fish a slack line quite a lot of the time you know like uh, i fish fluorocarbon a lot of the time and i like to let that sink down to the bottom um but when you're fishing so let's say you're fishing really far out on a deep lake sometimes the undertow you know because the mono doesn't doesn't matter how much water it takes on it's not heavy enough to keep itself down in the undertow um for one lake i was fishing in belgium i was fishing at 35 wraps um and no matter how much line i slackened off at the reel all it did is just made the line start bowing round in the wind. So the line was never getting any slacker, never getting any deeper. It was just bowing round in the wind. So there was no advantage to paying off line. And in that situation, I just tightened to the lead as tight as I could and just put them out there like absolute guitar strings. Um, and it worked. I was fishing, you know, you think guitar strings. I was fishing in 25 foot of water that would be going down like that. But at 140 yards it didn't seem to make any difference. Um, so in answer to your question, I fish slack. It doesn't really matter as long as there is an undertow. If there's if there's a big amount of undertow that's tightening my line up, then I just fish tight. Um, but if I can slacken off and get it to go down, then I will. Um, so it's not, it's not always about the, obviously it's more to do with the range, but also to do with the undertow as well, you know. So I'm, I'm, I weigh up the two things together to perform. It's, it's, it's situation dependent, you know. If, if I can slacken off, I will. Uh, but if there is undertow pulling my line around, then I just fish tight. Cool, right. We've, um, we're going to run until... Let's have a cup. You can have a cup. Let's give him a cup. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you always do this to me. That's six. Um, That's six cups. What, right? Uh, Danny, Danny. Okay, Danny, six Smith. Um, if you uh, send me a message, um, cart, uh, Scott at cartfix.tv. Um I will also try and find you if you have an account. Um, yeah, we're going to run until about half past, aren't we? So we're run to it's half not past. too too long. So to, uh, we've got so many questions. So some some obviously we're, we're not going to get to the majority. So just try and uh, try and get through these ones. Come like on. short but sweet kind of answers. Okay. <laughs> yes. And we might get no. Yes. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, we might get through okay. some more. Um, do you think the sound of a carp uh, makes when crushing tigers attracts other carp in? Uh, and triggers uh, more feeding. Yes, definitely. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Unquestionably, yes. Yeah, um, I would agree because tigers are so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just do, do that again. <laughs> um, James Samkin, what is the most underrated bait for carp? Would you say tigers? Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> tigers. Um, uh, right, one second. Um, uh, James Samkin, this is a good one. Evening, lads. Should I buy my son a carp fix subscription? Well, he's won himself a carp, I don't yeah, know Yeah, well, this is the thing, right? <laughs> we'll try and not do blackmail, but we'll give him a mug and a sticker pack Yeah. just for that question. Yeah. So if he's a member, then happy days. If he's not a member, he should get one of these new... Yeah, if he's not a member, yeah. These new spinnery packs, because yeah. it's an absolute bargain. Yeah. 
James Samkin. How many cups have I got left to give away? Three? Two? Uh, two, four, six, seven, three. Three cups yeah, to give away two, still. Three four, cups and three sticker packs. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Quick one again. Well, you, you answer it quick if you can. Uh, James McFarlane, small weedy lake, 90 per, not 95% weed full depth. Fish used to being targeted on hard spots. If you have to fish for them in the weed, what sort of weed uh, should you aim for and how would you approach this? If it's got different types of weed, it's different. It's hard for me to know what it. Yeah, it's yeah. a really hard question. If it's say ninety percent of the water's full of weed, yes. you know, I would. You can. You've got to fish on top of it. If you say, if you, he's saying that the spots are being fished to death, the fish are avoiding them. Um, you know, weed that's sort of stemmy, like it all comes up off the bottom like that, is very difficult to fish on top of. Um, if it's flossy type weed or blanket type weed or Canadian pond weed, that's easier to fish on top of with chod rigs, um, and that's obviously a very good idea. But if it's, it, you know, like grassy weed, you know, you get grassy weed, you can't really fish a chod on top of that, um, and in that situation, you're better off fishing in the clear spots or crashing a solid bag through. You, like when it's grassy, if you can plumb around just to get a drop, um, in that situation, solid bag, because then it's, it's less likely to get caught up on anything, and if it does, it just knocks it out of the way. Um, but yeah, either chod's on top of the weed if it's not stemmy sort of weed, and if it is stemmy sort of weed, then you're better off with solid bags trying to just fish them for drops. This is an interesting one. Don't maybe don't give too much away. <laughs> Matas has asked, Cart fix, will you ever expand your team or will this be a two man boat? We're gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> <laughs> no we are going to need a bigger boat um we definitely will expand um yeah like scott said we don't give too much away um i, the, I i'm looking at this from a, a point of view of different people coming to fish and f film we film yeah um yeah we we don't want to work with just absolutely any, anybody you know we do we, we're going to be quite picky um with who we who we do work with in the future um yeah we don't want to give too much away but um yeah we're we're gonna aim high aren't we scotty yeah yeah hi hi <laughs> hi <laughs> um okay another weedy one uh how would you fish a weedy lake with low stock 15 acres but show over the weed most of the time fish over the top would you or not hey, can we give matey boy a cup the previous one? Oh, the the other the other uh matas <sighs> Matasapolas. So we've got two left, two left, uh, two more. Matas, if you send Scott at cartfix, um, dot TV a message, if you're not a member, if you are, I'll find you, um, and we will arrange a uh, mug and sticker pack, which are available at cartfix. <laughs> <laughs> dot shop. Roll up, roll up. <laughs> I've just got a shop, mate. <laughs> um, right, so what was the next question? Uh... It was the weedy one, wasn't it? Yeah, it's very similar to the previ that yeah, previous yeah. question about fishing on top of the... W you know, it's, it's very hard for me to give you a straight answer without having all of the details, you know. Um, you know, the the, uh, the age-old thing that people used to say, if it's weedy, just chuck a chod out there or just chuck a solid bag out there. But different types of weed at different depths, you know, there's, like I say, the grassy weed, the, the blanket weed, the moss weed, you know, and each short of one of those different types of weed in different types of depth suit different styles of presentation. Um, so, yeah, without having all the details, you know, it's, it, what numbers of fish in there are, are irrelevant. It's just, you know, it's how you're presenting your bait so that the fish can get at it, can see it, you know. So, um, you know, I can't really answer that one. This is uh, this is quite an easy one for us to answer. Um, Cut. What for that? What? <laughs> no, 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 it at the start don't you yeah I yeah believe. yeah so if you ever want to know a little bit about the the background of cart fix and how it was concepted 
Um, then yeah, the, the one of the latest called the podcast, the one with um, yeah, it's a two part podcast, one with me and one from Joe from Carpology. And um, we talk a little bit about that. But long and short of it, we met at Corda, um, worked together on loads of projects, and yeah, it was just a, a natural thing to to do. Uh, Tetley's Yorkshire Earl Grey, which one? Right, straight up, Tetley Careful and Earl. What you say. <laughs> Bearing Tet- in mind where I'm from. Tetley and Earl Grey are both dishwater. You know, you do not, that's not tea. That Earl is, Grey don't, my, I'm sure my brother drinks Earl Grey with no milk. That's how you meant it. Yeah, it's just it gross. Right? Like, yeah. uh, you know, I'm, uh, Scotty, being a Yorkshire boy, yeah. he, um, he likes a bit of Yorkshire, Yorkshire tea, didn't you? Yeah, that's what I, we've got over there. I, yeah. I, I like Yorkshire tea, but yeah. I also like PG tips, but Tetley is gross. It's it, gross. Tet- yeah. Don't, don't yeah. go there. No, yeah. no one buys Tetley. Not only if the PG's run out. Yeah, yeah. So th- this uh, this next one from Kieran. Next two are cups. Okay, so Kieran's asked. Um, it, he's asked on some lakes I fish spotting. Uh, I'll, I'll start again. On some lakes I fish spotting, um, and it can be frowned upon. And there is a lot of talk that it's too noisy and will push the fish away. What's your opin- opinion on this? I mean, and that's like ringing the dinner bell on like on B two and one at linear. When I filmed like Los East and and other people there, it attracts a fish, and we've seen it on some of the drone stuff. They are swimming to un- it, yeah, under it. And it we've depends got depends on the lake, you know. A lakes like B One and that they are trained to it, you know. There's so many fish in those lakes, and so many spawns hit hit the water. They they know that that's food coming down through the lake. Um, it's happening on a daily basis, and they get used to taking it on the drop and, and getting it away, or getting away from it. Hence, why people fish sloppy spot mixes X, Y, and Z. But you'll find when you fish in the more difficult lakes, the harder lakes, that you know they they don't they don't need to compete for food. They, any form of angling pressure, and they'll be gone. You know, um, so yeah, it, it all depends on how desperate those fish are for the food. You know, on the very well stocked lakes. They will come to the spawn, you know. On the on the lower stock, more difficult venues, they certainly don't come to the spawn. So it's yeah, it's venue dependent, um, and sometimes it's depth dependent. In deeper waters, can you probably get away with it a little bit more? But um, if they're coming to the spawn, you know, it's generally on the on the more well stocked lakes. Scott Lloyd, heggy lad. <laughs> He can't have a cup. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, right, let me find a... Let me just scroll through. Scott, do you want a sticker pack, mate? He's actually asked a question. Go on, then. What's it's his question? It's a bit of a funny one, but... Oh, right, he can um, have a cup. Of course he can have a what, cup. Scott? Yeah. We, we did send him one, but it broke. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send him another. We'll send him another. Uh, for this question. If you could be a carp... Would you be a common, a mirror, or a leather? Uh, what would be your name, and what lake would you live in? Would you be a sucker on the surface, out in the pond, or in the edge, and what? Oh. And what would your, what would be your meal preference? And lastly, who wouldn't you, who who wouldn't you want to catch you? <laughs> well, what, 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 so would you, you be, catch me would you be a common a mirror or a leather uh, I'd be a common because yeah. I'm common as muck what would um, your name be my name would be um, the mug <laughs> um, what was the next bit uh, what lake would you live in um, um, I'd live in somewhere like Lac de Deux or something yeah, I'd, yeah, in a, in a big French reservoir. Yeah, loads of room. And what was the other bit of it? Uh, would you be a sucker on the surface, out in the pond, or in the edge? No, no, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be creeping around the and edge. What, what would your meal preference be? A meal preference, um, any particle that's on the turn, going a bit alcoholy. Yeah, and who wouldn't you want to be caught by? I wouldn't want to be caught by Uncle Jim and keep his um, <laughs> his barbecued sausage fingers off uh. me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Any tips or uh, this is from Tim? Any tips or ideas on fishing spotting at range when you have to wade to cast in uh, a swim? Well, when you're spawning from a waded position, 
you know, you'll be surprised how more difficult it is. First of all, you've got less less room to drop the, the spawn back. And secondly, you'd be surprised how much body movement is involved in casting a spawn a long way. You know, you, there's a lot of torso movement in it. So first of all, I'd fish with as short a drop as possible on the rod. You know, I, I, when I spawn, I only fish with a three foot drop. You know, there's a lot of, you know, the fashion or people would say that it's best to fish with a six, cast with a six foot drop. But I always fish with a three, three and a half foot drop. Um, and I would try and be as shallow in the water as possible rather than as deep. So keeping as much height, much of your body out of the water as possible because that will help you to cast more accurately and further. So that's the, um, yeah, the well, end let, of the question. Let's, let's, do, let's do one more because Scott doesn't really count. <laughs> oh, Scott doesn't count. Yeah, because we sent him one already, but it broke. So okay. I, do, I, do, I will resend him. So we've got one more to give away. So we'll, one just do, more. we'll, we'll do one more. Um, let's just, let me just scroll through. While, while I'm doing this, um, you can get your phone ready. I'll have to draw the tackle box yeah, winners. Yeah, you get that ready, and I will find a question to find. Um, yeah. We, I'll, I'll just play the trailer again just one more time. Here's the Yately trailer while I just find out uh, a question. <laughs> oh, Golden Balls is back. 2004, I'd done my first season on Yately. I'd caught four of the nine famous mirrors in that lake. It was almost life and death, and I wanted them so, so badly. You know, I'm talking big, crusty, brown and grey backs, you know, like the heathers, the, the dustbins, the, the single scales. They're, they're all chunky. They're all out there. Fish on! I was still after heather. I was still after single scale. And I was still after baby orange. I had a bite. Beep, beep. Fish just exploded on the top. There was a massive vortex and you just see it just go, I've seen it. Flash of grey. It's a heather. Heather fucking leather. Badoo, badoo. So um, I've not <laughs> managed to find a question yet. So let's do the draw. What we, we've been the draw for the. Um... Do, do the draw for the two tackle boxes. Okay, can you? Um, so can I'll you go onto the GoPro screen. Have you got everyone's names loaded up, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just pull pull the phone back a little bit, um, yeah, and then just tilt it up. That's it, perfect. Like that? Uh, a little bit closer to the camera. Yeah, right. Uh, it looks good there. So all, all Daryl's going to do is going to scroll through, yeah, and then just scroll do through. For, I'll tell you when to stop, yeah? So you don't... Hang on, look, we've got to load them all up, look. Yeah, that's what I mean, load them up. Load them up. There I'll, we go. I'll be here all day, you better keep looking for That's questions. okay. Yeah, I'll look for questions while you're doing that. Um, just keep loading up. You can see that we're doing it fair though. There, um, there's a, a lot of people. Should have done this, shouldn't I? Yeah, that's why I said to yeah. get it ready. I was yeah. too busy reading text messages yeah. from my wife. <laughs> Telling you off. <laughs> yeah, I got told off. She said when you, someone said, "Why do you go fishing?" and I said, um, the fir "Apparently, the first thing I said was to get away from the family." She took quite offence to that. Didn't mean it. I said some people. I didn't say that's why I go fishing. Right, I found a question anyway. Okay. So you can do that first, so we don't. I'll do the question while I'm doing this, yeah. so it's okay. still loading up. All right, okay. So th I mean, this kind of covers the next film we put out. Leia will cover a little bit of this, hopefully. But Jonathan uh, Cooksley has asked, "Evening, Daryl. I can only fish days." Uh, let me just put onto this while you're doing that. Uh, evening, Daryl. I can only fish days, and my aim is to break the thirty-pound barrier. Any tips for only fishing days? Um, any tips for fishing days? Um, get there as early as possible in the morning, um, and and don't make too much disturbance. And obviously, you've got to be on the fish. You know, it applies same same rules apply as normal. Um, but just don't make too much disturbance. Possibly have your rods all clipped up, ready to go, uh, and travel light. You know, it's very easy to carry too much equipment. So keep your tackle light, keep your disturbance light, and also, um, yeah, pre pre clipped up spots. Right, should we pick a name out of here? Yeah, ready. Just um, just show everyone that the you can see on the scroll bar on the right there. There's loads of names. So I'll tell you when to stop. Yeah, just keep just keep going, and we'll just I'll just tell you. In a in a little just bit, just, back yeah, just, yeah. Just keep going. I'm um, I might I might leave it for like five seconds because you don't know when I'm going to do it. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just keep going doing. a little bit more. Stop. Okay. 
Let me show the screen. Show the screen. Show the it screen. Was that Jack at how, Lloyd. How am I spelling it? J A C. J A C E E V S and. J A C. Can you take? Let's show me a little bit. J A C E E V S. Right. Can you take a screenshot of your phone just so we don't lose his or her? Yeah. Uh, and then. And his friend no, is at Lloyd. Yeah, it was that particular one, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Lloyd. Yeah. Okay. So can you um, click onto his account? Not not with us seeing it. So let me just go off this. Click onto his account. Yeah. And on the cart bits one following back. Follow requested. Yeah. Jace Evans, his name is Jace, Jace Evans. Jace Evans, well done. You have won. Show him what. Show him what he's won. <laughs> show him what he's won. Show him what he's won. And also, he's won, he's won him and his mate one of these, the Corda Collection Edition. It's upside down. <laughs> All right. Also, give another exclusive. What are we giving away next month? Ten of them. Ten of them. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I was lost for a second, but I just <laughs> just remembered. So these two are going to Jace Evans. But we've got another 10 of these. They're not just a standard tackle box. They've got all of the um, compartment boxes, the leader safe. They're like, they've got all of these. These Can you see that on the camera? Uh, go, go down to the GoPro, mate. Worth doing so people can see. That's it. So it's like, it's the tackle box, but it's got all of these compartments in, inside as well. So it's, I think they're what, they retail at 69.99? Yeah, but uh, I think it's 60 quid, yeah. Yes, I think it's fifty nine ninety nine for for a tackle box of all these bits, and we've got ten of them um, to give away to exclusive to members. So obviously not everyone that's on this um, freebie. Um, yeah, ten of them for anyone who is an active member by the thirty on the thirtieth or thirty first of April. 30, yeah, I don't know how many days. Thirty days have April. September, April, June, and November. Yes, yeah, so anyone yeah. who's got an active membership on the thirtieth of April. Uh, will be in with a chance of winning one of those tackle box quarter tackle box collection editions. Yeah, and uh, the, the going for the questions is there are there are an awful lot of questions that we didn't get around to answering. So please save them for next time. We will have more prizes next time. Yeah. Um, for people that ask uh, questions, so save them for next time, and we will do our best. We will get your que question answered at some point. <laughs> Let's cut to Daryl, and then. Uh, We'll say good night. Yeah, good night, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us on this live. And uh, yeah, look forward to getting out in the bank. It's not long now. 29th is not far away. We'll leave you with the trailer one more time. <laughs> 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 Just so you can uh, look forward to see what you can look forward to. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Oh, Golden Balls is back. 2004, I'd done my first season on Yately. I'd caught four of the nine famous mirrors in that lake. It was almost life and death, you know, I wanted them so, so badly. You know, I'm talking big, crusty, brown and grey backs, you know, like the heathers, the, the dustbins, the, the single scales, they're, they're all chunky, they're all out there. Fish on! I was still after Heather, I was still after single scale, and I was still after baby Ruth. I had a bite, beep beep, the fish just exploded on the top. There was a massive vortex, and you just see it just go, whoosh. I've seen a flash of grey. It's a Heather. Heather fucking leather. Badoo, badoo.